Hello lovely people, how are you all today? I hope you're well, I hope you're warm and tucked up. I've just come back from the garden, it was so gorgeous. <clears throat> Most of the snow has melted now, still a little bit lying around, but <clears throat> hopefully it means that this week I can get back into the garden properly and do some gardening. But even with this snow at the moment, <clears throat> all is not lost, there's always something to be done. So today was just a quick little visit to get some bits and pieces from the shed for some seed sowing. I collected some of my onions, they're doing absolutely fine, I'm amazed. Um, <clears throat> bit of a tidy up in the shed, it's always in a state. <laughs> um, a little bit of rubbish to take away. So you know, I think what I'm trying to say is, unless you've got six foot snow drifts, which I guess some of you have in the rest of the world and hopefully in the UK, not left now, don't be making all those excuses. Oh, it's too wet to go to the garden. It's too cold to go to the garden. There's too much snow to go to the garden. It's too hot to go to the garden. It's too wet to go to the garden. Ad infinitum. Stop with the excuses get the right clothes on and get out there and enjoy it because you know today it was kind of there was a sort of sadness almost now that the snow has gone because it was so joyful and pristine and beautiful a couple of days ago so now that it's melted yeah it does look a little bit sad but it's still gorgeous to be out there to hear the birds to just experience that kind of peace and quiet and solitude. Oh, can't beat it, can't beat it. And you know what? I had to wait years on my allotment waiting list to get my plot. So now that I've got it, I don't want to waste a minute. I don't want to waste a season sitting indoors and making excuses for not going. That is it anyway. So, if you are stuck indoors because of six foot snow drifts, <laughs> um, there are still lots of things you can be doing indoors. It's a little bit too soon still for most of us to be doing much seed sowing. In about a couple of weeks, three weeks time, I'll start with things like tomatoes and celery. If you haven't already got things like peppers, aubergines and celeriac started, you've still just about got time, but get a wriggle on, because the peppers especially may take quite a while to germinate, and you need to get some, you need to get them established because they need a long season, so you've just about got time. So, <clears throat> today, it's all about making paper pots, yay! So, a bit of recycling, a bit of saving money and a bit of doing something with my hands to keep myself out of mischief now that I'm back indoors. So today I'm going to show you how I do them with my paper pot maker. I'm sure lots of you are familiar with this. I'll show you how I do them with that. I'm also today going to have a go with doing it with a wine bottle. <laughs> now the choice is yours as to whether you want to empty the wine bottle before you start making pots or do it afterwards. I emptied this one a couple of weeks ago. So I'm going to try that. I've never tried it before. I've heard it work, so I'm going to give it a go with you guys. Ah, oh, I forgot, forgot, forgot. I've got over here my big sack of loo rolls. So a lot of us are familiar with using loo rolls as they are for um, some of our plants that want a nice long root system and don't want to be disturbed. So the flint corn got started in these the sweet peas, um, runga beans, that's good in, in loo rolls as well because they're like a nice long root. But I'll show you a way as well to use them for short plants without a hole in the bottom. And then finally, this is so much fun, a bit of origami. Now, um, a couple of days ago, was it two, two or three days ago, we had our annual general meeting, our AGM for the whole site, and it was such a lovely evening. Um, we've had, in the last year or so, a couple of new committee members join, and it's been brilliant because they've brought so much enthusiasm and new ideas to the committee. It's brilliant. There are some committee members who've been there five, six years or more, and really they should just go because they're so stale. But these new people, brilliant. 
and one of the ladies uh, was giving a sort of a chat that was opened up to all of us to brainstorm about things like water saving, composting and, and generally gardening organically and how we can all reduce plastic etc etc yay she's a lass after my own heart it was fab but she also brought us and gave us can you see this crib sheet look at that isn't that fantastic of how to do these origami paper pots and they were fab so i'm going to see if i can show you today how to do that as well but first things first, I'm going to start off with my very simple paper pots using the paper potter. This really could not be a more simple. Um, these aren't cheap, but by Jiminy, they're such a good investment because I've been using this now for four or five years. This was a Christmas present, so maybe it's the sort of thing to ask for for a Christmas present because, like I say, they're not cheap. So basically, uh, with your newspaper, either a broadsheet doing strips that way or these little kind of red tops. Actually, it's not a red top. I get all of my newspapers from the local train station because there's a massive stack of them. I think they're probably doing similar things in other cities around the country, but there's these massive stacks of free newspapers for the commuters, and there's always loads left at the end of the day, so I go and have a good scavenge. So what you want to do is cut strips about, hmm, what's that, about 12 centimetres. Let's cut that all the way along. The paper potters do come in different sizes. So I've got the small one, and this is ideal for starting off, say, a single tomato seed, for example. They're really, really simple. There's a little bit, can you see from the angle? There's a, there's a bit of, a, look, let me show you like this. So I'm gonna wrap it around, but I've got a bit of overlap at the bottom here because that will tuck in to form the base of the pot. Maybe not quite so much overlap. See about that much. So quite simply, roll the whole thing up. Roll it up, roll it up. Then fold the bottom in sort of slightly like that. And then with the base of the potter, See, it's got a dimple in the middle. That just helps to force this middle in and hold it all together. Urgh, it takes a bit of a scrudge. Mm, scrudgy, scrudge, scrudge, scrudge. You see how it's pushed the bottom in. So, see from that angle. So it sort of helps to hold it together. And then just, oops, I've given myself no space to get my thing out. <laughs> hold on a second. Just twist that out and voila. A little pot. Actually, I've made these a bit deep. I could have made it a little, a little less deep. Now, just sort of sitting on their own in a tray, they can be a bit wibbly wobbly. But by the time you've got loads and loads of these packed into a seed flat, I would say I think I can get about forty of these into a seed flat. A whole tray, forty tomatoes, brilliant, done. So that's with the shop bought paper potter. Now, this is the bit I've never tried. Um, I'm going to try it with the wine bottle now, and I'm going to make the cut a little bit deeper, just because it's got more of a base, so there's more, going to be more to tuck in. I'm just going to cut this one for now. So I suppose wine bottle, jam jar, anything that's round. So again, I'm just going to roll it around, but leaving a bit of spare flap. Let me show you that again. Leaving some spare at the bottom in order to for that to fold under. No idea how this is going to work, but we'll give it a go. Unlike Blue Peter, I have not got one that I prepared earlier. <laughs> so... Wrap it around the bottle, fold the end in. Now this is the bit I'm not sure of because I've got nothing to, to scrudge it in. Um, I 
I don't know if I can scrudge it against itself a bit. Would that fit even? No. I think the thing to do would be to find a bottle that's got a good dimple underneath and find something that will slot into the dimple. But even so, there we go. That's another pot. So obviously it's quite a bit bigger in comparison. But this would work perfectly for, say I've got my tomato seeds started in this, when it comes time to sort of pricking out potting on, then it can go into this one. And if it didn't get too much bigger, then that whole thing could quite simply be buried in the ground. I think that's the, the thing though, is to find something to scrudge the bottom with. Having said that, I know it looks really wobbly, but again, if you've got two or three in a row, and they're all jammed into a seed flat, they'll hold each other up. Brilliant. So yes, that works as well on a, on a wine bottle, jam jar, whatever you fancy. Now, should we have a go at this origami together? Yay! I'll need to get another newspaper because it does require a full sheet. Just before I do the origami, I almost forgot about the loo roll. So, if you don't want the full length, you could of course just cut it in half, but that would be really quite shallow. But here's another thing you can try. Squash the loo roll flat. Really, really pinch those sides flat. Give it a good pinch, 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 pinch. Then, just squash it the other way. And again, pinch, 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 pinch. Because we're eventually gonna make it sort of square. Good pinch, good pinch, good pinch. So, you see we're trying to get it to come a bit more square. Keep pinching, keep pinching. Then, quite simply, at the bottom, snip up about a centimetre on each of the folds, on each of the creases. Oops. Doesn't have to be gorgeous, obviously. Okay, now where you made those snips, just fold, fold each snip in. Again, just give it a bit of a, give it a bit of a pinch to get the fold to stay. Next one, pinch, pinch that fold. I think the thing with all of these um, sort of recycled and paper pots is they're not brilliant at standing up on their own but once you're in a seed flat so now I've folded all the ends in I'm just going to tuck this edge under that edge to hold it in place so there the bottom is closed and again we've got a nice little seed pot and of course by closing the bottom like that you're not going to lose a load of your compost out of the bottom little hole for drainage and like I said, they're not going to be great at standing up on their own. Oh, that one's not too bad. So yes, if you want to use your loo rolls, but you don't want to have that full depth of soil, because that's quite a bit of compost, quite a bit of compost to use up. And also, if you want to shut the bottom off so you're not losing any of the soil, that's a really quick and easy way to do it. Now, none of the you're not going to create a hundred pots in five minutes, of course not. But what could be more lovely on a bit of a grey day? then to put the radio on, listen to a play on the radio or listen to your football team on the sports channel, whatever it is, as you make your pots. Or even better, have a friend over, sit your friend in the kitchen, get your friend uh, working on the brews and um, chat and make. So, <laughs> I'm just gonna move you guys back a bit. Now, I'm going to try this wonderful bit of origami that Catherine showed us the other day. So she did it with a broadsheet, which produces quite a biggish pot, about maybe like a 10 centimetre pot. I don't have a broadsheet. Like I said, I'm using this recycled kind of red tops from the train station. But you want your sheet open and flat like this. So the first thing to do is we fold it in half that away. Then we're going to fold it in half with the bottom to the top. bottom to the top. Now, folding in half again, 
that away. Now this is where it starts to get fun and interesting. So this fold that we've just made wants to be opened out. So hang on a sec, so just before I do that, see the, the edge here, this edge here is going to go in line with the spine as it were, we're like making a little book. So it gets opened out, that bottom edge is now going in line and we make some more creases. One side, then flip it over. Oh my goodness, how does that work? Ah, I see, flip it over that way. Do the same, so this bottom edge is gonna go in that vertical direction. It's like making a paper party hat, isn't it? Is this right? It looks like it's gonna, well, we'll give it a go. We'll learn together. She made it look so easy. Right. Then it says, open the wings up. I guess that's a wing. Ah, open, no. This is really tricky. Open the wings up. Hang on, I'm gonna pause you guys a second. Just bear with me for one second. Right, I'm back. It's just in the photograph, it looked like it was coming this way, but it's not, it's going the other way. So, we've got as far as that. Now, closing up that section, and the same on the other side, closing it up again. So now we've got our nice sort of triangle kite shape. Now, fold the wings into the crease at the center. So, folding my wing in there, and then that gets opened, yeah. Fold the wings in, the whole wing, into the center. Oh, no. I've never done origami in my life. <laughs> now I can see why. And open that up. Then, Gordon Bennett, fold this in again in a straight R. So this middle edge, now this middle edge, is going to be folded into the center. And likewise on the opposite side, so this middle edge is going to come into the centre. Comme ça. I guess we're going to flip and repeat. What does it say? Flip and repeat. So turn the whole thing over. So that goes to the middle. That goes, oh, who invented this? Isn't this so clever? Well, I'll say it's clever when it's finished. And then remember that middle line then goes into the center there. Little edge into the center. Ooh, I hope it's gonna work. So it looks like that. Fold the flaps down and crease them well. So this is the top flap. So this is basically going to be the bottom. So this whole flappy section at the top gets folded down and crease it well. Crease it well. You could even crease it well with the back of your scissors. Flip. That's that one done. Crease it well, crease it well. And then it says, now open your pot. So, I don't know how this is gonna work. We'll see. Let's open it. <gasps> Look. Oh my goodness, it's like magic. Oh look, it's kind of, yay, I see. So then all you want to do on the bottom bit is just, I suppose you could just pinch around these lines just to create a, a flat crease. And then, well, look at that. Would you, Adam and Eve it? Who'd have thunk it? Go on, chuffed with that. That's absolutely fab. That's crazy. I've never done any origami in my life, but it works. There was just that one hiccup when I couldn't quite make out on the picture whether it was coming out or being pressed in. But I love that. That's fab. The only thing with this, I would say, is that's taken a whole sheet of a newspaper. Whereas, say, that's going to be a similar size, isn't it, with the wine bottle. Um, 
that's taken a strip so you could probably get three of these out of one sheet of paper as opposed to one of those however maybe this one will be a little bit stronger yay oh that's been such fun and the thing is <laughs> there you are <laughs> sorry jerky 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 um what fun so you see i love days like today you're never too old to learn something new i've never done origami in my life that's insanely satisfying i've had some fresh air in the garden never mind that it was wet underfoot who cares i'm in the middle of making all my pots i've learned a new skill what could be better so why don't you give it a go if you've got a really grotty day you've had your little bit of time in the garden you've come home you're warming up and you're thinking what shall i do because i really want to do something for my garden make yourself some pots so that's it from me for now on for, for now from now on not from now on <laughs> that's it from me for now goodness gracious me i've got about 200 pots to make <laughs> i'm gonna be here all day <laughs> my fingers need a black i'm gonna be absolutely filthy in about an hour's time filthy but happy so for now i'll say cheerio have fun whatever you're up to and I will see you all again really soon, I hope. But in the meantime, take care and do some origami.